What's going on guys? Welcome to Python exercises. So once again, we're going to be tackling a Python exercise. Now this video is going to deal with dates. So we're going to utilize the Python date time module. So what we're trying to tackle in this video is how to get the dates for the past seven days. So we want to get the date for the past seven days, including today. Now we'll have to utilize the date time module to accomplish this. Well, that's one of the ways. So let's just see what the expected answer is. So the expected answer is this. So you'll see, or if you can't see, let me just uh, expand this. We have today's date, the January 31st, and then followed by 30th, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25. So we have seven days worth of dates. And this is what I am expecting. All right, so I want you guys to give it a try on your own. And then once you're finished with your attempt, resume the video and you can see how I solved it. All right, so welcome back guys. All right, so let's just try to solve this problem. All right, so the first thing we need to do is of course, import date time. Import date time. All right. Now, the next thing we need to do is get today's date. Now, there's several ways to get today's date. I'm going to use datetime dot datetime dot now. Now, let's just run this and see the outcome. And of course, I need to print it. Okay. All right. So the datetime dot now prints out today's date, which is 2020 and January 31st. And then we have the, the time, which we can actually just use a split and get rid of if needed. But we won't worry about that in this case. All right, so now we need to get yesterday's date. And how do we get yesterday's date? So uh, daytime has something called time delta that allows us to manipulate a daytime object. So we can add or subtract to the daytime object, just like simple arithmetics, and we can get uh, different daytimes. So if you want to get yesterday's date, we just subtract one day from a daytime and we get back yesterday's date. All right, so let's just see a quick example of that. All right, so. What I'll do is I'll save this to a variable. And then what I'll do is I'll print today minus datetime dot time delta. And we will feed in days equals one. And that's it. So we have datetime dot time delta and days equals one. So let's just run this now. First, I'll clear the screen. All right, so let's just run it. All right, so as you can see, we get yesterday's date, uh, 1.30. So we started off with uh, today's date, 1.30, and then we subtracted uh, a date time, time delta object from it, and we got back yesterday's date. So now that we have this, we have everything we need to accomplish the seven past days problem. So all we need to do is iterate through seven days, and we'll get back uh, seven date time objects. So we can do a simple loop for i in range seven, actually, let me just copy all this. All right, so all I'm doing is for I in range seven, which is the past seven days, we're going to print out today minus the day time, time delta, and days equals I. So let's just run this now. And you'll see if I get 30th, let me just get rid of this. Let me run this once again. All right, so I get 31st, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25. So I, I get a list of the past seven days. Now, usually when you use uh, today minus daytime dot time delta, you get back uh, daytime objects. However, if you uh, print them, uh, the output comes out as strings. But if you want to convert the daytime objects into strings, all you need to do is use string. So let me just give you a quick example of that. For example, I'm going to add today into a list. And we're going to print a dates list. And we'll just comment this. So let's just run this. Okay, so if I run this, and let me just clear screen and run it again. Okay. As you can see, we get back a daytime object within the list. So today is actually a daytime object. 
Now to convert it to string, all you need to do is convert it to string as such, putting the uh, str. Now if I run this again, you'll see it's a string version. So it's very easy to convert a date time object into string. And in our case, we can actually just use split and split off the time if we just want the dates. But there's also a way you can do that in date time where you can change the string format. So if you want the month, for example, January to be written in January, uh, you can do that as well. So there's a lot of variability or a lot of settings and configurations as to how you can display the date. All right, so if you guys enjoy these types of videos and if there's anything you guys want to see, let me know in the comment section. All right, that's it for this video. I will see you guys next time.